three, three. Tomorrow makes number four. This week. Call the public works meeting to order. Uh, we'll do a quick roll call. Uh, Alderperson Bourne, are you online? Here I am, yes. Okay. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. Alderperson Salazar. Is she online? No? Okay. Alrighty. Uh, we'll start right out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> Go with 2.1, approval of minutes from June 15th. Move to approve the Motion minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion made by Jim, second by Marcus. Any discussion on those minutes? All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. Okay. 3.1, resolution 24, 21, 22, June 29th, 2021, direct referral. A resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a permanent easement, underground utility easements, and a temporary easement between the city of Sheboygan okay. and its board of water commissioners that, is specific, that are specific to the new raw water improvements project. Okay. Director Beeble. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, really, this evening, um, as part of this, this process um, and the project moving forward affecting the uh, Valrath Park. What we need to do as a committee is uh, have this referred from the Public Works Committee to the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission okay. for their review and recommendations and therefore, uh, therefore, and then their recommendation will come back to this committee eventually for your review and uh, ultimately um, action on their recommendation to forward it or not to forward it and, or, or approve it or not to approve it and so forth. That will be your decision after they've met um, and then ultimately back to Common Council. So that would be <laughs> the proper thing is to make it uh, or send it to the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission for, for their review. Okay. Move to uh, refer this to the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? I've got a, just a procedural question on this then. Um, was it just an oversight that it came to us as a direct referral or does it have to come here first, get referred and then come back? It's my understanding as part of the procedural uh, process of Common Council. They're not a standing committee. It, this document had to come to a standing committee such as Public Works. Then it gets from your committee from under your direction to be referred to the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission which in is advisory to ultimately this commission, uh, this, this standing committee. Thanks so much. Okay. All righty, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, that is approved. We are moving it on. 3.2, resolution 25, 21, 22, June 29th, 2021, direct referral, a resolution <laughs> authorizing the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for the purchase of one Bobcat brand toolcat tool carrier vehicle and related attachments for the Department of Public Works motor vehicle fleet. Bernie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bobcat toolcat vehicles are very, very flexible vehicles. Uh, they have a lot of attachments that can be used uh, to do the various jobs that the Parks Department and the motor vehicle and, and Department of Public Works does. Uh, we have a, another unit and I'll, I'll call it a mini front end loader. Um, it was bought in 2017. Uh, it was found that, that that machine does not have the capability that a tool cat has. It, it's very limited on what it can do for the department. So what this resolution is, is to authorize the purchase of a tool cat and trade in that Wacker Newson mini end loader. Um, we've researched 
the trade-in value that the dealer has offered, and it's a fair and equitable offer based on other market data that we've been able to, to find. Um, one of the things that, that front-end loader did or does have, it's, it's a very narrow stance and a high center of gravity, which means that it's a little bit unstable. Toolcat is a very stable unit, sits two across, uh, and as I said, uh, the department already has a number of other attachments in addition to what comes with the Toolcat that can be used with that machine. Uh, the funding, is, the net funding after the trade-in would be 25881.51. Uh, that'll be coming from the uh, Motor Vehicle Fund. Okay. And that's about it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, Jim. Uh, I would make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Jim, seconded by Marcus. Any discussion on this at all? Mr. Chair. Sure, go ahead. One. So I assume this is the only um, Wacker Newson uh, that you have, right? That's the only one that is um, that you want to replace, correct? Yes. Okay. And was this in the, in the CIP or did it need to be? It, 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 this is not in the CIP. This is this is part of the operational fund for the motor vehicle. Since since we're it's a replacement of an existing type vehicle, mm -hmm. so that's why we're trading this one in and replacing it with. Uh, a similar but more versatile piece of equipment. And we have already two of these types of units in our fleet. And as a purchasing agent, Bernie Romer mentioned, it has multiple attachments that we already have in our fleet. For instance, a, a mechanical broom, uh, front end uh, scoops. It has snowblower attachments. There's also auger attachments. So there's multiple pieces that we're able to attach. So when we purchase this, we're not needing to buy all the other attachments since we already have them in stock. The Wacker Neuerson machine was a one specialized unit and it really didn't meet our needs and it wasn't nearly as functional. We love the nice narrow width because it did help during the snow season on some of our narrow sidewalks and that. But uh, to have that for just one specialized uh, operation, it just wasn't uh, very effective use of that piece of equipment or our resources with this new Bobcat that we will be purchasing, the Toolcat, excuse me. Thank you, Director. Um, I, I just was wondering, the, um, I just, I'm trying to understand what is that comes out of the CIP that we already are familiar with and what it doesn't. Yeah, this, that when we, when we, when we develop the CIP, we usually will have a replacement schedule that we will have and it will list these types of pieces of equipment are on schedule to be replaced. This is, this would, I would say is, because we're coming to the committee this evening, is this would be uh, un, un, not planned replacement. Uh, it was, it was an opportunity that we saw that with, this was an underutilized piece of equipment we worked with the purchasing agent, looked at the opportunity to trade in and get some value for it while it was relatively uh, newer and had low hours because these, this type of equipment is based on hours, not mileage. And as a result, we were able to maximize getting that early higher value by trading this piece of equipment in versus waiting another five years, hanging on to it and then having it more depreciated and having less value and having more expense in terms of a replacement. Perfect, thank you. Um, I guess one other question I had or comment, I guess, I, the, the one thing I saw, there, it's, it's a little, the, the, the tool cats are a lot more safer to operate than the, the, this one is. There, is there, well, and and that, that's yeah. our concern as well. We've, we've had some issues where narrow areas and, and the machine has tipped over in some operations and it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's a narrow articulated mm -hmm front end loader, it's a min, and, yeah. and basically, again, it's very limited in terms of what we can use it for in our operations. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Alrighty, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, 3.3, 3, RO 352122, June 21st, 2021. Document 3.5, our communication from Charles Paul regarding seagulls nesting on the roof of the old pick and save building. This is a discussion only. Yeah, the seagulls are very noisy and there's a lot of mess from the birds droppings all over. And even sometimes at 1.30 in the morning, they're still making noise. And there's other people in the neighborhood that are concerned about that too. And you know that nest, seagulls have to nest someplace, but picking that spot there, it's causing a problem with the neighborhood. And the uh, um, manager from Lakeshore Lanes doesn't like it there either. And I maybe should get more people to come or something to voice their opinion and maybe on this. Um, I guess my question. And I also mm -hmm. talked to the, was told to talk to the DNR. So I called the DNR and then they told me that they could probably put up a netting or a screening but you'd have to do it in fall to prevent the nesting to start spring because you can't do anything once the eggs are there. Yeah, yeah right now, currently, I know, because I, I deal with it. With, with, uh, uh, and it's been that way for like three years now. It has to be done early. Yeah, and you're going to chase them away there, yeah. and then they're going to go somewhere yeah. else. Um, what was that? What, wasn't there something done previously at all? Was there? Well, okay. that one time they chased them away from where the field was or Piggly Wiggly, they got them away I from mean, there. I mean, even with Pick and Save, I thought that they did do something last year. What was Yeah, that? they did. So that the Mayor Vanderstein called me and told me they did something, but this year they're back. Didn't change. Hmm. They came back. They come back in spring when they lay, put the mm -hmm. nests down and eggs. Then you can't do anything because of being mm -hmm. a migratory bird. So they came back. Have we contacted Mr. the uh, Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to ask the gentleman if uh, our new garbage system has helped with the seagull problem because I drive down South Business Drive quite a bit, and compared to a couple of years ago, I certainly haven't noticed the number of seagulls that were there previously. So I guess my question is, if there are less numbers, do you think our new garbage system has had an effect on that? Well, the, gar the seagulls used to be by the garbage cans by mine all the time and across the street. But now that we have the cans covered, it's kept the seagulls away from there, but it, they still go to pick and save building. They don't come to the garbage cans anymore. That was nice. I'm glad they put those cans up. Okay. That worked real, real well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, uh, with your recollection, I think is correct. Uh, it was a couple of years ago that I think the owner of that store was going to take some continuing uh, actions to take care of the problem. Uh, how was it last year? Uh, last year, we didn't hear anything about it. Uh, I think it was the previous year that it was really bad. Uh, do, do we know, does, does maybe the director know whether the owner of that building has uh, done, any, done anything this year, is going to do anything as time goes forward? Okay. Director Evil. <laughs> Yes, actually, the, the, the owner has uh, been active, and they've contracted with Migratory Bird Management. And uh, for instance, they, 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 they sent us some information. And I, and I, and I know um, our city planning development and our building inspection department has been very active with, with the owner of, of this property to, to make sure that they're being active and addressing this. So they, they do uh, actually have, have been working with the, the DNR and understand that they have a permit. And um, w what they've done is, I'll give you an example, as of last year in 2020, uh, they, they did quite a bit of um, nest removal. For, for instance, some of, some of the counts they had in 2020, they removed in May, the month of May alone, almost 3,000 nests. Uh, and in June, over 700 nests. Now, in this, in, in 2021, this spring, April 26th, they only removed 20 nests. That's all they could find it on, on the roof. Then in May, it, it getting later, yeah. and, and, and spring sure. and more, more nesting is occurring, they, they removed 250 nests. 
Again, in May, later in the month, 235. So roughly almost 500 in the month of May, where in 2020 it was over 3,000. Uh, and in June, their last one in June, they removed 195. And my understanding is they're going to be coming out later this week or next week for sure, uh, be giving it as a holiday week uh, to do another uh, inspection and removal. So they've been active. Uh, it's just not, it's not every day. Uh, they're, they, they're, they make their weekly, bi-weekly visits and, and they're active on it. Um, I, I, will, I will say that, you know, we, we fully admit that there, there's, there is seagulls and it is a problem and it's a nuisance. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we're experiencing it right here at City Hall. Um, Mike Wilmus and his team um, have been uh, deploying measures and are working with a group to also try to deter this activity from happening. It's uh, being on a coastal community as we are and uh, it's one of those things. But I, I do have to admit with, with uh, at least from my personal observation mm -hmm. as well, uh, throughout the city I have not seen the number of seagulls at least being a nuisance in the garbage. I think the, the, the cans that we have yeah. have deterred and, and, and it's taken away quite a bit of food source. So I think you know, the nesting, as maybe it's indicated here on the roof, it's really dropped, which is a good yeah. thing. I think we're trending in the right direction. I, I, it doesn't solve the immediate problem, uh, I get, but, the, but it's being active. I mean, they're working at it. And I guess, you know, as long as we're, we're aware of it and we can continue to work with the management and the ownership of that, that property mm -hmm. and, and be uh, more active in trying to deter this, uh, that's, that we'll, we'll continue that dialogue. But I just wanted to give you some of sure. those numbers that they Thank sent you. us, um, the, the Director of Planning and Development's on vacation, but he mm -hmm. gave us this information so we at least okay. we could share it with you this evening. Okay. Thank you, Director. Uh, I, I guess that's my, you know, uh, I know, you know th th there, there are limitations of what you can do too. The DNR does not just allow you to just go in there and, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm even surprised that they're allowed to take the nests out. Uh, I know that they're they're very, very, I mean, if once the eggs are laid, they're pretty much. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't, sorry, oh, go I, ahead. My, my understanding, they don't, they don't necessarily take the eggs necessarily, okay. but they, 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 there's a process of they they do it usually like a vegetable oil they okay. they, they put in they keep their stick they remain in place and that's okay. part of the problem is is that if if maybe if you if you were allowed to remove them mm -hmm. that would maybe then they would go somewhere else but since they're there what they just do is they just don't hatch then yeah but they remain in place you're right you can't yeah. remove them physically yeah there, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of rules with that and it's right. you know. You have to follow them, uh, uh, but it does sound like they are being proactive. They are working on it. Mm -hmm. I know it's not maybe the answer you want to hear, but they have to follow. They have to follow the guidelines. They can't just, you know, you know, uh, they can't just go out and shoot them or something like that. They have to be. There has to be. It has to follow a certain. You know, they're 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 a protected species. I know. <laughs> you might say, well, why is that? Why are they protected? There's a gazillion of them, but. They are. They're 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 a protected species, and they they can't be. Uh, uh, they, they, there has to be a process that they have to follow, and it sounds like they are working on it. And, and I'm sure that the the owner of that building is even frustrated with it himself because he's you know having to deal with it. I'm sure this isn't cheap to have this company go up there and do that. I mean, if they're moving all these nests and stuff like that, I'm guessing it's costing them some money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess at this time, I don't really see this is a discussion only, anyways. I don't know if there's yeah, anything. I, mean, I guess we're, we're going to continue to work with with the owner of yes. the property and we'll work with our building inspection staff and continue to work with this management company and uh we'll, we'll, we can report on the next next progress sure. to see if it's if it's improving or what what's the trend yeah uh, but from 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 at least from last year to this year it's it's vastly improved uh at least in the number of nests how uh and i guess if we can continue in that direction and if it's improving we'll continue to to have a dialogue we have the gentleman's phone sure. number and, and contact information and and we can make sure that the proper yeah. staff continue that dialogue okay I, I, I think that, that that's reasonable I think that's the best way I mean that that's the that's the best course of action right now is to just keep it keep going where we're going I mean it sounds like we're, we're moving in the right direction I mean yeah, I know it's frustrating but there, at least there is there is look it sounds like there's light at the end of the tunnel and it, 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 it may not be totally gone this year but at least it's a start so, 
All righty. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Jim. I was just going to mention, being that this is a document, I think uh, a motion to file would be in order, and I would make a motion to file. Second. Okay, motion to file. Made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. <laughs> we'll file. All right, next meeting date. And uh, we're going to be meeting next time, hopefully. Uh, we're planning on meeting at the um, municipal building back in the old. We're going to go back to the, the old way unless anyone has any. This. Is that publicly available? Do you have the equipment? Oh, fantastic. So we're going to be going back to the back to the meeting room down there. So uh, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, unless something would change, well, but for right now we're going to go go with that. So uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Uh, second. <laughs> Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to let you guys know that next week I'm going to, or the next week, okay. I'll be on vacation.